Welcome to our Capture 2019 tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at using textures in materials. I've prepared a stage with two cubes hovering above it that we're going to use in order to test some texture applications. In order to apply a texture to an object, we need to first create a material. So let's select the materials category and click the add button. Let's call it cubes. Now the next step is to load the texture image we want to use. In this case, I've downloaded the playing card king as an image from the internet, but of course you can use any photograph or anything else that you have as an image. Now I've selected this texture for the material. So the next step is to apply the material to an object. We do this using drag and drop. So I will drag our new material and drop it on the leftmost cube. As you can see, the texture has now been applied to the cube in a way that it actually wraps around all the surfaces of the cube. However, the aspect ratio of the image doesn't quite look like the original. And the reason for that is that we are now in control of the width and height of the texture applied. Now in this case, it would probably have been better with an 80 centimeter texture width. Another way of taking control of the way the texture appears and the size it has on the object we apply it to is by using what we call a manual mapping. Now before I do that, I'm going to reset the texture width again so I don't confuse you unnecessarily. Now in order to map textures manually, we need to activate the manual material mapping mode. This is done by pressing the cogwheel button and choosing map material. Now, in order for this to work well, you want to be working in a view that matches the side of the object you want to map on. So in this case, I want to map to the front of the cube. So let's switch to a front view. Now here you can see the texture itself and we're able to move it as well as scale, stretch it, and change the aspect ratio of it. This way we can place the texture where we need to have it on the object. Now you may note that the texture now applies to the object in a different way. It uses what is called a planar mapping that we are now controlling using the manual mapping mode here. Now, if we want to apply the same material to more than one object, we simply drag and drop it to the other object. However, the mapping of the material is unique per object. This means we can map it differently to different objects. You can map both materials at the same time using the ma material mapping mode. You can see one instance of the texture per object we are mapping. Now, in some cases, you may have multiple objects that you want to map an entire image over. The best way of achieving this is by using the map to extends command. This wraps the texture image around all the objects that you've selected. If you move an object after you've done the material mapping, the object preserves its own mapping of the material. Finally, and as promised in the previous episode, I want to show you the luminance property of the material. The reason for that is that texture mapping is often used in order to simulate an LED screen. So let's first start with dimming the lights in the live view a little bit. Then let's set a luminance for the material. Now I know that 15 nits is the equivalent of a very dim mobile telephone screen, but it is bright enough to light up the surfaces of the objects in this case. So as you can see with textures and material mapping, you have all the tools you need to create a virtual LED screen 
Of course, there are other functions in Capture that can be used to create more realistic looking LED screens, but they are more laborious. Thanks for watching and see you soon again.